So hi, Phil Plate here again in my live chat session from badastronomy.com and I got another really good question. I, I like this question because it leads into some cool stuff. And the question is from Joe Pilot. Hey Phil, I spend a lot of time above 35,000 feet. It's about 11,000 meters for you metric folks. Uh, great view from up front by the way. Um, how many more stars can I see since I'm above 80% of the atmosphere? Um, so 35,000 feet is where, of course, uh, airplanes are flying, and you're above a lot of the atmosphere there. Well, on the surface of the Earth, when you look up on a very dark night, uh, you can see at most, really, 3,000 or so stars at one time. There are about 6,000 stars in the sky bright enough to be seen by your unaided eye. That literally, if you could see the whole sky at once, you could count 6,000 stars. But at any one time, you can only see half of those because the Earth is in the way and the Earth is opaque. So you'd think, hey, if I go above the atmosphere, right, I'll see even more stars because the atmosphere is absorbing the light from the stars. And it turns out that's not correct. The atmosphere of the Earth is incredibly transparent. Um, if you don't include clouds and haze and smog and just the garbage in the air, the atmosphere is about 98% transparent. It lets 98% of the light hitting the upper atmosphere down to the ground. And this is visible light. So really, um, even if you were above the atmosphere, you wouldn't see that many more stars. Even if you were on the surface of the moon, on uh, the part of the moon where the sun is not up and the earth is not up, and you were to look up, you still really would not see any more stars than you would on earth. They would look crisper because the earth's atmosphere is turbulent, and so that, that makes the stars twinkle and it makes them flicker, and, and if you're above the atmosphere, you don't see that. Uh, but in fact, from the surface of the earth versus up in the sky, uh, up, I should say above the atmosphere, you really don't see that many more stars. On the other hand, uh, the earth's atmosphere is very good at absorbing ultraviolet light and infrared light. So if you want to look at stars that are brightest in the ultraviolet, very hot stars, much hotter than the sun, and they're blasting out ultraviolet light, we don't see those at all from the ground, or at least we don't see the ultraviolet light from them. You have to go above the Earth's atmosphere to see them, and, and that is one of the reasons that we put Hubble up in orbit above the Earth's atmosphere, so we can see this ultraviolet light and this infrared light. Plus, uh, you don't get the atmosphere causing twinkling, so you can see two stars that are very close together from the surface of the Earth might look like a big blobby thing, but above the atmosphere where there's no air to, to, to mix the, the images of the two stars, you can actually separate them. It's a very strong uh, uh, power of Hubble's to be able to separate near close objects, objects that are near each other. And the third thing is that the atmosphere itself gives off a little bit of light. It's not much, but it's there and it blocks the very faintest things from being able to be seen from the ground. And so, from the ground, there, there's just a limit to how faint of a galaxy you can see. Whereas Hubble, above the Earth's atmosphere, and Hubble's not a very big telescope, and yet in this sense it's more powerful than the biggest ground-based telescopes, because without that atmosphere, that's, that sky glow, it can actually see incredibly faint galaxies. And um, for those of you keeping track at home, the faintest object detected by Hubble had a magnitude of about 30.5. That was using the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, which was a camera I actually worked on. I got to, I got to fiddle with that data. And um, I actually calculated that on my own to see if that was true. And it really was. We were, we were positively detecting objects that were a magnitude 30.5, which is millions and millions of times, uh, I better say that right, let's see, Let's just say, millions of times fainter that you can see with the naked eye. Uh, it, they were, um, the faintest objects you could see were incredibly faint. Uh, and it was, that was pretty spectacular to be able to, to point those. So getting above the Earth's atmosphere helps you to see faint objects, close by objects, objects that are close together, and objects that emit light that's absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. But visible light comes right through. So getting up onto a, onto a mountaintop, doesn't really help you that much, except that um, you get past a lot of that twinkling and sky glow, and so the stars look crisper.